can't have religion or church. You have to have an encounter with God. Ran to the bathroom and told one of the father, the girl, that I was Satan's son. And the father said, no, he's a nice guy. You see, there was two schools of thoughts of that. Either he don't know he didn't have spiritual discernment or God blind him so I can get saved. So how is it that you run to the bathroom because you have fear? Because I showed up to the banquet and then you're trying to expose me when the guy is taking a leak. Think about it. So God said, church couldn't save you. A track couldn't save you. Pastor couldn't preach you because you choked them to death. So I take you to hell. And I'm going to show you that I am God. And the devil's not. And I'm going to show you that even though I didn't show up in your house at the age of eight, and you thought I had left you at the schoolyard, I never forgotten you, John. I'm here now. And he took me to hell. I left my body. And it was, it was, I ended up in a train that was going hellbound. It was going so fast to hell. More faster than any speed on the earth. And it was so full of people that the people, you couldn't see their faces, but they knew they were going somewhere they weren't coming back. And then when the train hit hell, it was something like an explosion, like an atomic bomb it hit and opened the doors. And as soon as you step out to hell, you hear, you, you feel this fire tormenting. You hear the wailing. And the first thing you say as a person, which is you lying, because there's no redemption in hell. You go with your sinful nature to hell, by the way. The first thing you say, I don't belong here. Yes, you do. Because you see, Jesus, knows, you see, Jesus don't send no one to hell. There's no one in the Bible, Jesus sent no one to hell. Your decisions do. Amen? Your decisions send you to hell. The difference between the homeless guy that lives in the street and the one that lives in the penthouse is the decisions they made. So don't blame Jesus for hell. Okay, don't blame Jesus for hell. You make the way for yourself. So me going to hell was me making the decision that I didn't want the cross in my life. And Jesus said to me, I never forgot you. I loved you. Even in 1997 when the devil took my eyesight for one year and left me blind for, and I was registered with the commission of the blind and I was being trained to use a dog to walk me around. God said, I loved you. Did I still give you your eyesight back? And the devil took credit. In my first book, you see the certificate of legal blindness registered with the state of I was legally blind and I was not able to see because I wanted to take a sabbatical from witchcraft and I wanted to just love my daughter and be a real father. And I couldn't see my daughter for one year because I was blind. And then in 2002, I got saved in 1999. The devil sucked and punched me, took my eyesight for three and a half months. I was sitting in an apartment in Manhattan, legally blind again. The devil said, you see, I still own you. This Jesus guy can do nothing for you. Blind and back to the commission of the blind, sitting there talking to the counselor about folding money, how to fold a 20 and know it's a 20, how to, fold, how to fold a five, how to use quarters and nickels. And you know you can't see the money, but they show you a technique how to know which one is which. Sitting there as a Christian, blind. Church didn't love me because the church thought I was a double agent. They thought I was like Paul, I was faking it. Folding money and through the grace of God, through the grace of God, the doctors would say, the doctors that operated on me, they were Jewish doctors. They did like over seven surgeries. And they said to me, you'll never see again. I said, that's your report. I said, that's okay. You're a doctor. You're a great doctor. You're an awesome doctor, but you got limits. I said, I got one report. I will see again. That's my report. They said, you, you have, you ready, you're such an encourager. I said, no, I have faith. It's not encouragement. It's a difference. Blind, broken. You know who drove me to that? You know who drove me back home that night, that, that day they did the surgery? Their own doctor because Christian didn't come pick me up and took me home. The church, I'm not blaming the church. The church is a hospital. So how is it that I go to hell? The devil shows up in hell and the cross of Jesus Christ shows up in hell. The Bible says, the Bible says that if you make your bed in hell, I'm there. 
Jesus said that in the night, the night I leave, you go after the one. He said, I never forgotten you, John. I loved you before you had a name. In hell, the devil went to kill me, to destroy me, because I left my body. My body was dead in hell, in the earth. It was dead because I left my body, I ended up in hell. And the devil said, if I can keep you here, you'll die, and they pronounce you dead on the earth realm. And the cross showed up in hell. I mean, I had a short and a t-shirt. How could a three-foot cross show up in hell? And the devil came between me and the cross. And the devil went to grab me. He touched the cross. And he touched the cross. He dropped like, like he was nothing, like a piece of paper. And I ran to the portals of hell trying to find a way out. Because you see, when you're in hell, you want to get out. And you want to get out because it's a place of torment. A place, the absence of God. A place that you hear noises that you never hear on the earth. And sounds, and you touch the ground in hell. It's not this, it's not the grass, it's not concrete, it breathes. So when you get there, you're gonna remember that I told you here, sitting here today, that hell is a real place. Hell, because you tell Christians today, repent, don't judge me. You know what? People in hell would love to hear the word repent one more time. Walking the portals, and then I, the devil showed up the second time. Big, big horn. I mean, ferocious. An animal. I never seen him like that in a 25 years. Never saw him like that. And he said, I'm going to kill you. I said, I got these marks. I, I got, these are protect me. He said, I gave you that. That's my contract. I own you. He said, the devil, listen to me. As much the devil told me he loved me, he was a liar. Because the devil could never love you. Because you made the image of God. <laughs> And all I remember is when he went to grab me again, the cross showed up again. And there's something about the cross. There's something about that. That when you, when you touch it, when the devil touched the cross, he fell and dropped him like nothing. And then my body went back into my, my whole spirit went back into my body. I mean, like a lightning bolt. I felt like I was in ICU and people were doing paddle, the electric paddle to do in your chest. That's how I felt. And God say, repent. Hi there, this is Lana. Thank you so much for watching this testimony. I bet you were blessed. If you would like to see more of these testimonies, please subscribe. And thank you again for watching.